and welcome back to another video. It is now the 1st of April, April Fool's Day, and we are just here putting our final dressing on this uh, obviously great prop. So uh, this is a field called Broadleys, and it is DSV Temptation as a variety, which is a hybrid. So after this application of fur, we leave it up with the gods uh, to hopefully give us some kind weather and uh, to see it through to harvest, hopefully a decent yield. Uh, we're going to go slightly early with this final dressing as always, mainly because of the limitations with the spreader and the height of the crop. Um, but things might change, things might change. We might be looking, well we are looking, at putting liquid fur on the oilseed rape for the final, if not the final two applications, with a self-propelled sprayer. Uh, a deal may or may not have been done, but we will keep that a surprise, potentially until the sprayer turns up on the farm. Uh, but yeah, big grin on my face, very excited for what is coming later on this year. Now I know a lot of you might be feeling a little bit down, uh, looking for things to watch in this quarantine period, and there's a lot of good videos out on YouTube, particularly farming. Uh, but if you haven't heard, there is a really good program which I recommend you watch on uh, a channel called Quest. And um, it is on normal TV, Quest. Uh, but to watch this, you can type it in on, on Google and watch it on your laptop. Uh, it's a program called Born Mucky, which basically follows three farmers. Uh, you may or may not have seen it advertised, may or may not have watched it. Uh, but I highly, highly recommend, if you're at a, a bit of a loose end, go and check it out. Um, there's a farmer from Herefordshire, there's a farmer from Cambridgeshire and a farmer from Shropshire uh, and I think it's over about eight or nine episodes that follows their lives throughout the year um, and it's quite a decent watch really. Uh, you get a good insight into the in industry and to these three particular farms so um, yeah go and give that a watch if you're feeling at a loose end. Uh, we are carrying on with fertilizer this is day 11 on on this seat doing fertilizer uh, just going through as I, as I mentioned earlier on the final pass of most of the oilseed rate uh, a little bit at Yeza is behind so we'll probably leave that till after potatoes uh, but we have still got MOP to put on the potato ground both X and uh, free spuds this year so uh, we're going to spend at least another couple of days on this seat spreading. Catch up with you in the next part of the video. I thought I would take you through uh, putting these settings into the machine. So Amazon provide quite handily this spreading chart book uh, with a range, complete range of products in it. Uh, and as you saw earlier, we are using CF Nitram. Uh, so page nine is CF Nitram. I'm going to take you off here just so it's a little bit closer for you to see. Uh, so this is the booklet, provides you with a few details on it like the calibration factor, um, diameter etc. We are using a TS2 disc 
uh, at 24 meters as you can see so it will give you a drop point which in this case is 31 uh, a disc speed so how many times it spins per minute which is 900 on say doubles off it's 720 uh, so that's quite fast in comparison for the night tram but it's because it's a much smaller product um, so it needs more force i'm no good at physics really but more force to um to throw it further so uh yeah and then you can carry across crack carry along at the top you've got the border settings so um you've got in the hedge uh, up to the hedge basically and if there's like a water course there so three different uh, border settings I usually use the middle one uh, which is kind of basically up to the edge of the field and uh, as you can see it'll drop its speed there uh, to 800 on that one side and um, you can decrease the value as the book says by 16% um, because it's spreading on a headland uh, finally you've got the um, meters in which it turns on after you come back into the field so 31 and uh, again when you come up to the headland minus 5 uh, and the way you put that into the machine is on here so I've got a list here of fertilizers so as you can see Nitram MOP uh, 2613 which is like the single top product I'm using CF double top etc uh, etc et obviously got CF nitram selected at the moment uh, the calibration factor I did put in as 1.32 but it updates itself automatically so it's now 1.46 as you can see uh, spreading disk speed 900 delivery system 31 or drop point um, same thing so then you've got the border spreadings uh, and you've got the other details which you put in there. Uh, so as long as you've selected, you've put those details in, you can obviously edit, alter them a little bit if you find, um, you know, the other settings help you in other ways or whatever. Um, but it's a good starting point for the, to take the values out of the Amazon book obviously, and then fine tune it to, uh, to suit you. So we are now going to go into this field here and carry on but I thought I would just show you that you can also get the um, details on a, an app now which Amazon produced for an iPhone or um, Android phone so if you forget this not the end of the world you've got an app there we go Day 13 on the first spreader, and we are just currently in a field called Mary's Meadow, spreading some MOP onto the wheat after potatoes. Uh, last couple of days, I've been spreading the MOP on both X and pre Spudland, which uh, I changed tactics from the night tram because it got a little bit windy for it, uh, which is less of a worry for the MOP. If you want to know a bit more about the MOP, which I usually spread in autumn, then I will put a video link up now. Uh, so feel free to go and check that one out but uh, yeah it's looking all right the sun is shining they all see rapes in flower the beans have been drilled uh, there's nitrogen waiting to be soaked up and uh, all we could really do with now is a bit of rain uh, to help get the nitrogen soaked in get it, get the crops under 
underway um, and also to give the beans and the spring barley which is being drilled now uh, a bit of moisture for them to get on and grow with. So something I've been thinking about for a little while is getting a magnetic mount for the GoPro and I've only just got round to buying one. Uh, I looked on Amazon the other day and ordered one which said it would come at the end of April because of this whole coronavirus. Um, I think Amazon is sort of prioritizing and also rightly, may I just add, uh, some of the sort of medical stuff uh, and etc, etc, don't 100% understand. But this morning I got a email come through saying that it was going to arrive today. So I'm hoping that uh, when I get home this evening, it will be there and I will be able to use that in the coming videos, which will be quite exciting. Uh, a little bit cheaper than a drone and just get a few different angles in there. Now last time, if you follow me on Instagram, which uh, is JJ McLeod, I'll put that there. I put a video out where I was just having to play around with my phone, trying to get a nice angle of myself in the first spreader. And, uh, well, I'll let you watch it now, what happened. So I'm sort of hoping that that doesn't happen with the uh, magnetic mount, it doesn't fall off. Fingers crossed because uh, it's going to be a bit of a risk, but we'll try and get some cool angles for you guys to see. Uh, Gemma, who's at home, is off work now uh, because of everything that's going on and came up with quite a good idea, I thought, last night when I got home. Uh, she said she was thinking about that I should do a get to know me video and I I thought I agreed, I thought that was quite a good idea. Uh, I've never really done sort of like a Q&A video of sorts. But if anyone uh, who is watching has any questions for me, then feel free to put them in the comment section below. And when I get around to doing that video, hopefully with Gemma sat here asking the questions, along with some others to sort of fill it up, depends how many questions we get. Uh, it'll do a nice little video for a sort of get to know me um, style video. So there we go. Put some comments, uh, put some questions in the comments rather, of things that you would like me to answer. It can be about anything. Um, and I will do a video on that at some stage. So I just thought I would finish this video by showing you the wheat we've got in this field. Uh, as I said earlier, this is Mary's Meadow and this is the field after potatoes. Uh, so this would have been drilled mid to end of October with a plow and combi drill. And uh, as you can see from the footage, there are still some wet, wet spots around. Um, but generally, it's gone from being very, very wet to suddenly almost like drought conditions. And uh, we definitely need some, some rain in the coming days once we've hopefully got the rest of the furt on and, um, and also got the spring barley in and also rolled. And then some rain would be absolutely brilliant but uh, there we go don't forget to put your questions in the comment sections as I said I have got a little bit more to do probably put some fur on the spring barley finish off the night tram and uh, yeah edit and upload this video hopefully on Monday Tuesday that's the plan anyway thank you very much for watching and see you again in another episode of on the farm